the time has come and I've been dreading this all day for more reasons than one. Hey guys, welcome back to the tennis vlog. If you are not yet subscribed to this channel, please subscribe now and I'll leave that at that for this video. It is women's final time at the Australian Open. It's an unexpected final. Uh, full credit to you if you called this one at the start of the tournament. Number 14 seed Sophia Kennan playing her maiden Grand Slam final against two-time major champion Garbinje Muguruza, who had a pretty poor 2019 and half 2018 by her standards, but is back in a Grand Slam final. Time to get down to the business of previewing and predicting. Now, before we get going, <laughs> let's address my last preview and predictions video. I looked at those results and I thought, my word, horrendous day at the office for me. And you might have thought the same and you might have wondered why I'm back. Uh, first of all, somehow I got the two ATP predictions correct, so uh, that did save my self-esteem somewhat. But then I looked closer at the results on the women's side, and obviously I do my analysis as well, and actually, a handful of points made the difference in both those clashes. I predicted Barty to beat Kennan in straights in both sets that she lost. She had set points. I predicted Halep to beat Muguruza in three sets. That one I was more uncertain about anyway. And having watched that first set back, Muguruza pretty much stole that first set from, Muguru um, from Halep even. So it was a really close call. And this final by all accounts, looking at the stats, looking at the form of both players coming into this could be an even closer one. So let's get into the details and let's look at the runs of both players coming into this match and then have a bit of a look at their backgrounds and then have an assessment of who might come out on top. Let's start with the non-seeder and it feels weird to say that given that Muguruza's experience and history is that much greater than Kennan's, but she is the non-seeded player here, Muguruza, after her less than ideal 2019 season. At this point, I'm going to say I keep looking to make sure that the stream hasn't crashed during this fortnight. In fact, during the one week I've been doing videos during this fortnight, streams have crashed twice. I'm not here for it happening again. Um, here we go, Muguruza started off actually losing her first set 6-love to Shelby Rogers, but bounced back for a love 6 6 one, six love victory in round one. Had it tough against Isla Tomljanovic, who's in decent form, but 6-3, 3, three six, six, 3 there. Then she really announced herself in round three with the 6-1, six, 6-2 six, dismissal of the number five seed Alina Zvitalina. Followed that up with another win over a top 10 seed, Kiki Burton's, the number nine seed. That was a 6-3, 6-3 victory. And then the quarterfinals, Anastasia Pavlyuchenkova had taken down a couple of big names, but Muguruza took her down, 7-5, 6-3. There were some trickier moments at the beginning of that one, but Muguruza managed her... Um, the heavy nature of the way she hits the ball and was able to problem solve and come through. And then the clash against Simona Halep, the number four seed, 7-6, seven, 7-5. Seven, it was 10-8 in that first set tiebreak and Halep had three set points during that opener. A few words on that one. Um, no, actually, I'm going to do it differently this time. Sorry, improvising on the spot. I'm going to go through Kennan's run and then I'll talk about both their semi-final performances and compare and contrast at the same time. Okay, so Kennan started off and just to drop a word in here, Kennan's only dropped one set all tournaments, which is really impressive considering that she's here for the first time. 6-2, uh, 6-4 six, six, in round one, 6-1, six, 6-3 six, in round two, both against lesser known opponents. And then Shuai Zhang was her first real... Um, it's a real tough uh, opponent, I guess, in the in the third round. 7-5, seven, 7-6. Seven, she was pushed close, but came out on the right end of the big moments. Uh, Corey Coco Goff needs no introduction in the fourth round. Kenin lost the first set tiebreak, but then stormed back to win the next two sets, 6-3, six, 6-love. Six, and as I said at that moment, I did feel that Kenin, with her vast amounts of self-confidence was going to be the player to knock Goff off because she, being a fellow American as well, had a lot to prove. Kennan's father has spoken openly this tournament about how Kennan's results have really not been truly appreciated and maybe she felt like that was a particular match in which she could step up and show what she was about. Followed that up with a straight sets victory in the quarterfinals over Ons Jabeur, 6-4, 6-4. Uh, there was a lot going on in that match. Jabeur, 
um, throws a lot of different looks with her game, with the backhand slice coming into the net, and uh, there were some long baseline rallies. Kennan was able to show the extent of what she's capable of, both with endurance and then with coming into the court as well. So I think she'll be mightily pleased with that win. And then also with the way she backed it up in her maiden Grand Slam semi-final, having just won her maiden Grand Slam quarter final, took down the number one seed, the French Open champion defending Ashley Barth the home player. For many people, I, I guess, the favourite to win this title. It was a 7-6, 7-5 win for Kennan, and as I mentioned previously, Barty did have set points in both sets. So, what to say about these semi-finals then? Obviously, I got the predictions wrong for both. Hold my hands up, I was a bit surprised as well. Um, but they were close. They were both close, and what I would say about both is I don't think any player performed to their maximum potential. Kennan essentially watched Barty go to pieces before her eyes in the end, I think. Uh, that was that one was on Barty's racket, and the fact that she did not play her best tennis and came so close to winning in straight sets anyway uh, shows you how much, really, it should have been Barty, I feel, moving through. Looking at her stats from that one, 36 and 4 stars for Barty across two sets, that's just far too many, and her first serve percentage down at 50. Uh, so really not pleasing stats for Barty, but Kennan, on the other hand, 70% of first serves, which is a really healthy number. And Kennan is a player who, while she's really great on the back foot as well and has demonstrated her ability this tournament to survive in that position and also turn points round from that position, she does not shy away from coming into the court and finishing things off quickly as well. So that first serve percentage was very important for her. Um, she didn't have a positive differential of winners to unforced errors, but both players, I think, were um, tight and not producing their best at times during this one. Uh, she did convert two of her four breakpoint chances, had a decent number at the net, uh, but just edged Barty in that one, and it really did come down to a handful of points, and I don't think Barty was able to fully go through her options. It was just an erratic day for the Aussie, and a disappointing day to have it on. I, I did think that the pressure might get to Barty a bit, but I thought, given the way she's handled herself, how down-to-earth she is, what she's accomplished on the tour over the past 12 months, I did feel I had to give her the benefit of the doubt there, and it just wasn't her day, and credit to Kenan for stepping up and taking advantage, because of all the predictions I did, the four semi-final predictions, that one was probably the one I was most sure of, and now I'm having real trouble working out who to go with in this final, so full credit to 21-year-old Kenan, who was nowhere near a front runner coming into this major. It's incredible that she's the highest seed left standing. So uh, kudos to her, <laughs> Garbinia Muguruza then over Halep. As I've said, I feel like she did a little bit of robbery with that first set. She was um, the player to go up a break at 4-3. At Halep fought back, but throughout that first set and indeed during the match for much of it, I felt with Muguruza I was probably expecting more from her, and this is probably because, I mean, Muguruza's 26 now. I remember clear as day back when she was 18, and I probably hyped her up no end. Back when players around her age were rising, she was always my front runner. Uh, she wasn't as bigged up as some of the other players, I don't think, around her age range, but she was very steady um, and then really announced herself when she got that big French Open victory in the second round over Serena in... Would that have been... That wouldn't have been 2013, 14? I, I lose track of the dates now because the years are flying by. It's ridiculous to me that she's 26, but... Um, I think I've seen Muguruza play 2014, someone puts it in the chat, thank you. I think I've seen Muguruza play much better tennis in the latter stages of slams than she did against Halep. And maybe I'm just being picky, but as I watched that first set back, my thoughts were, she's not winning anything that's not an unreturned first serve or a one-two punch. When Halep got her on the run, if the rally extended beyond even five or six shots, Halep was winning the majority of those points. And then I was thinking forward to this potential clash with Kennan, and I was thinking, well, Kennan is a player who can hit heavy, hit deep, hit consistent, and has shown her ability to extend the rallies throughout this particular tournament. So if Mukuruta doesn't get her first serve percentage up, 
uh, that could be an issue. Uh, looking at her first serve percentage on the match, Muguruza's was actually way below Halep's. Halep had 72% of first serves landed, Muguruza only 59. However, she did have a clean differential, 10 aces, 2 double faults. Um, again, more unforced errors than winners, but I do think the situation did get to most of the, the players here, the tightness, the... Um, the Heat as well, they they played it down, but it was difficult conditions on that semi-final day. Um, Halep and Muguruza, neither of them had a good breakpoint conversion rate during that match, but I think you've got to give them both some credit for stepping up when the going got tough, and I'll talk about that a bit more in the near future. 20 out of 30 net points won for Muguruza in the end, but another thing I noticed in the first set was sometimes she was kind of a sitting duck at the net. If she hadn't finished the point off within the first four or five shots, she was almost kind of rooted to the centre of the court and ready to be passed on either side. She didn't seem ready to um, to take care of that, to, to get herself on the front foot and to finish things off. So, once again, very slim margin in points won and games won. I mean, 7-6, 7-5 in both semi-finals, so it tells you exactly how close it was and how close this particular final could be. Um, Muguruza... Obviously, I mean, where, where do I go from here? There's so much that could be taken from this match. Uh, Muguruza, the double-time Grand Slam champion, doesn't often lose at this stage of a major because if she's got here, it's because um, she's playing with self-confidence. She started to impose herself upon people. Two Grand Slams to her name. She has had both her wins over the Williams sisters in straight sets. So... Um, Serena Williams at the French Open and then Venus Williams at Wimbledon so two straight sets wins um, I think she's the only active player to have beaten both Williams sisters in a Grand Slam final so that is a big stat to have going for her when you think of the mental pressure of taking on one of those players in a major final um, obviously hasn't been here for a while and those of you that have followed me and I've even mentioned it so far this fortnight will know that I predicted Muguruza to win a Grand Slam last season just because with a player of her talents, with her ability, with her game face, she has the intimidation factor. I was even thinking about it as I watched her post-match interview compared to Kenin's. Kenin was very much overwhelmed, happy, excited, as you would expect of a 21-year-old who'd never been beyond the fourth round of a major making the first Grand Slam final, but Mukarutha just seemed to take it totally in her stride. Maybe she was a bit tired, but the game face was still on, the focus was still there, and it was very much the seasoned champion standing there on court. So I do think that kind of thing could have an impact and is something worth taking note of, but it does make my job here even harder because even as I sit here, I'm not 100% sure where I'm going with this. I've been back and forth and back and forth. There's just so much going for each player because I think really when you look at the stats and when you look at what they've done this tournament, they tend to balance each other out. For example, um, you could say that Sophia Kennan has less to lose coming into this because of um, her status in her career, because of no Grand Slam titles previously, but then Muguruza actually comes in ranked lower and losing on the head-to-head. -head. These two have faced off once before. It was in September last year on a hard, hard court. Sorry, I can't even get my words out now. And it was Sophia Kennan who was the winner in, I believe, three sets. And I'm just going to drag it up here. That tells you that this one could be going long. Um, I expect it to go to three sets, whoever is the winner, unless Muguruza pulls out a brilliant performance as she's capable of and potentially wins it in straights. I hardly dare call things at the moment. But yeah, Beijing, September. Um, Kenin was the winner, 6-love, 2-6, two, 6-2. Six, six, two. So two lopsided, um, two lopsided sets either side there. Um, and then again, you can balance it up. You could say that Muguruza's experience will help her in the big moments, but then again, you can say that Kennan's extreme self-confidence will help her in the big moments, as it has done throughout this tournament. I feel, feel that um, with the struggles both players have undeniably had, something they've both done very well is brought out their best tennis when their back has been against the wall. The few long rallies, the few lengthy exchanges that Muguruza did win in that match against Halep came in really pivotal moments. So she really knew when to bring it out of the bag. I was thinking about this. I was sat there thinking, 
how can she have played such a limited number of points well and still got the set? The fact is she knew when to peak and knew when to bring her best tennis. Uh, with Kenin, I do think she got a lot handed to her in that Barty match, but you can't deny her self-confidence, which is what got her through the Goff match, which is what has helped her to assert herself here um, against Barty. You know, Barty was up a break in that second set. Kenin got the break back, held for 6-5, and it was very much potentially still anyone's match. It had been a close first set. Barty was still on serve in the second set, but you could almost hear the air go out of Barty's balloon, and you could see Kenin sat there at the changeover, thumping her thigh, clenching her fist. She she felt she was going to break for that match. She Even in her debut semi-final, as the underdog, she thought she was getting a straight sets victory there, stepped up, played a great return game, and got the win. That's the kind of confidence that she brings into this final encounter. So seeing across the net Muguruza, a player that she beat as recently as September, she's less likely to go to pieces than if she was facing a Serena Williams or somebody. Her Serena, who actually, you know, she beat at a Grand Slam last season. So there are so many layers to this match. Um, it's, it's difficult because instinctively, I hadn't even really thought about predicting Kenin to win this because... I thought she was going to lose to Barty, and I thought she had a lot to thank Barty for when she came through that match. However, I then took a closer look at the Muguruza versus Hallett match, and honestly, I really was not convinced by the tennis that Muguruza produced on that day. Not convinced at all. And at the back of my mind, there's something saying, but it's Muguruza, she's been here before, she all, well, always tends to produce on a major stage. Even that Wimbledon 2015 final that she lost to Serena had a brilliant fight back in the second set, and she very nearly got herself back into things. It was a close, close call, that second set. But I can't go on the history too much. I can't go on the, the potential that she does somehow rip a 70% first serve stat for the entirety of the match out of the bag when, honestly, her service stats weren't overly impressive against Halep. Um, because here's the thing here. I feel like if Muguruza has a very healthy first serve percentage and is finishing things off from the midcourt, she maybe should win this match, could win this match. And then I look at Kenin's side of the net and Kenin not only is able to produce the, the big serves and the one-two punches that Muguruza does, but she has been playing, I feel, better on the back foot than what I've seen of Muguruza. I saw Muguruza get pushed around by both Pavlyuchenkova and Halep. Uh, I saw her struggling to redirect the ball and finish the points off. And like I say, when she wasn't finishing the points off quickly, she was having trouble. And Kenin will thrive off that, on off making her uh, play the extra balls. So I'm very much struggling because instinctively I was going to take Muguruza for this and the more I think about it, the more Sophia Kennan has going for her. And yet it doesn't make sense to me. Sophia Kennan, Grand Slam champion. I wouldn't have called it for this year. I might not have called it for next year, depending on her results of this season. But the stars have aligned. And what I've learned about the WTA, this tournament, is that it is still as unpredictable as I thought it was a few years ago. Coming into this tournament, if you watch my preview video, I said I thought that even if the standout contenders didn't get to the trophy, there was more stability at the top, and another of the more consistent top players would step up to take advantage. We do not have any one of that status in Muguruza or Kennan right now, so... Um, predicting is almost pointless because this could very, very much go either way. And as I'm sat here now, I'm leaning Muguruza again, but as I set up to film this, I pretty much decided to go with Kenin in three. Um, this, this is a way to sort this out because I can't just sit here going round in circles. When I have, um, <laughs> oh, I hate this so much. When I have predictions to make, if I think there is a riskier prediction, but I think that that prediction has enough legitimacy to go for it, then I will go for it. And honestly, based on caliber, based on previous performance at slams, um, based on unpredictability, I think the riskier prediction here is Sophia Kennan. And honestly, I wouldn't have said this 
a day ago, I wouldn't have said this a week ago, I wouldn't have said this at the beginning of the tournament. But I'm going to kick <laughs> I'm going to kick myself if Mugarutha wins this tournament and I was calling her to win a slam the whole of last season and and she didn't and she does here. But if there's a risk I think is worth taking it up, I usually go with it. And with her previous slam records, with the way she's been overshadowed by other players from her generation, by other players from her nation, I think Sophia Kennan is the risk here, and I think it's probably a risk worth taking. So, based on the way she's composed herself and asserted herself throughout this tournament, and even now my brain is screaming at me to go with Muguruza, but I think based on stats and based on analysis, I'm going to ignore that. And I'm going to say, can't believe I'm saying this, Sophia Kennan to win her maiden Grand Slam at the Australian Open in three sets. It has to be close. So I've said that now and I already regret it, but it's part of my job. This I must do. So Sophia, don't make me look like a complete idiot, please. Uh, but thank you for watching. Let me know whether or not you agree or disagree with this one. I think you know, this this was not the final that was expected by any means, but due to the way the semi-finals played out, due to the manner in which both players have come through the draw, it does make for a really interesting clash. Um, other things that I haven't mentioned that I was thinking was that I feel like Muguruza lost a lopsided first set um, when she went on to win the French Open title, which she wasn't a front runner for, so that's a similarity there. Uh, but at the same time, it would be hilariously, hilariously, um, how what, how do I call this, ironic if the player to have beaten Coco Goff goes on to win the title, because that's exactly what happened at Wimbledon, and it really fuels the hype train that's still rolling. So, uh, yeah, you know, Muguruza could have this on her racket, but I just don't quite back her enough to come up with the quality tennis that is needed to get across the line and even though Kennan is here in the latter stages of a Grand Slam for the first time her vast amount of self-confidence has set her apart has seen her to good wins and whether she's virtually had them handed to her or whether she stepped up to win them credit to her and I think another one could be coming her way on Saturday so I wrap up and the stream didn't crash so we're all good thank you very much for watching whether you're um, typing in the live chat or whether you're leaving a comment afterwards do let me know your predictions for this clash and if any of us gets close to being correct I think we've done all right because this one is super hard to call also said that about team versus Verev and that was the only prediction I got bang on correct in terms of winner and sets so if that tempts you come back tomorrow for my prediction and preview for the Novak Djokovic versus Dominic team final. For now, that's it from me. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you at the next video.